Good to see you all here. Thanks for coming out braving the hurricane, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's probably going to be nothing, which is good, right? God, you know, thank God for that. Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, uh, unfortunately, people are already in that hunker down mode, uh, which we really don't need to be. So I'm glad to see you guys all here. Uh, we're continuing with our series E3 today. Have another message about finding our purpose and meaning. Um, uh, particularly in God's kingdom. I'm excited to share that with you. Uh, one quick announcement, though, which is our Tuesday night class where we have been following on what we've been talking about on Sunday. Uh, because the hurricane was supposed to hit, like, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, we did cancel everything on Tuesday or, or Wednesday. And it still might. We still might get some stuff. Uh, but either way, it's kind of too late to back out. So, uh, so no E3 this Tuesday. We'll still get them all in, because uh, we had kind of an extra week to play around with anyway, uh, but we'll just be a week off. Uh, so instead of talking about what we just talked about the previous Sunday, we'll be talking about what we talked about the week before Sunday. Uh, and so not this Tuesday, but a week from Tuesday, we'll continue with E3 and talk about what we're talking about today. Uh, so still hope to see you all there for that. And also, this one that's coming up is going to be good. Even if you haven't been to any of the other Tuesday night E3s, uh, you can still come to this one. You'll definitely get uh, something out of it. But you'll, you'll learn more about that after we do our message for today. So uh, that said, let's pray. And uh, then we'll take a moment to meet and greet and uh, let our 1115 folks start to arrive. And uh, then the praise team will go ahead and kick us off. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity uh, to be here this morning. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Uh, and Lord, we know that when we do so, you are here with us. And so, Father, we pray that you would enlighten us by your spirit, that we might be well prepared to receive the gifts you would give us and to learn the things you would teach us. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's take a minute to stand up and greet one another. Say hello, shake a hand, give a hug, all that. with us we need no other hiding place we need no other hiding place I hope you sing in your name yes we know yes we know you promised never to forsake You begin, you will sustain. Yes, we know. Yes, we know.
Bring love. 
bless his church. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Air of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Perfect submission, all is done. Church, come on. This is my story. This is my song. Praise me, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story. going to tell him today how wonderful he is. Oh, what a Savior, wonderful Jesus. Oh, what a Savior, wonderful Jesus.
declare it together, church, this is my story. This is my story. Father, it is such a comfort to have that blessed assurance, Lord, to know that no matter what happens in our life, uh, no matter where we may stumble or fall, uh, no matter even when we sin, Lord, to know that we can come to you, we can confess our sins to you and receive forgiveness and be assured of that salvation and new life that we have through Jesus our wonderful Savior. Lord, continue to help us to live in that blessed assurance, not just this day, but every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our scripture lesson for this morning is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1, and here it is, beginning in verse 9. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> uh, so a question, H have any of you ever been lost? And when I say lost, I mean like really lost. I don't just mean you're not sure how to get to the address you're going to, but I mean where you didn't really know where you were and had no idea how to get back where you needed to go. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting feeling. I saw a few hands. Not everyone has had that feeling, uh, but I have, um, and I had this experience once. It was when I was a kid, when I was in high school. Uh, so I, uh, if, I think I've mentioned this a few times before, but uh, I played viola in high school. Viola is kind of like a violin. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more mellow. I dig it. Um, and uh, at, the, uh, at the pinnacle of my viola career, uh, I made it into the Chicago Youth Symphony Orchestra. So I was in the Chicago Youth Symphony Orchestra, and during my tenure uh, with that orchestra, uh, I had the opportunity to go on a trip to Austria and Germany where we toured around for like two weeks. And the, the coolest moment of which was we went to Vienna and we got to play in the Music Verein, which is a famous music hall there, and we got to play alongside the world famous Vienna Boys Choir. They, uh, we accompanied them on something. And so actually, have you guys ever played that game like Two Truths and a Lie? Um, I always, that's my go-to for that, that I played with the Vienna Boys Choir. Everyone always assumes that's the lie, but I have done it. Uh, and so while we were there, one of the other stops that we made was in Nuremberg which was an awesome place, <clears throat> got to tour, there's a big castle there, you guys know I love that kind of stuff. But on one of the afternoons, we were like done for the day and we had free time the rest of the afternoon at our hotel. And there was a, a, a little forested area there that had some hiking trails 
And so some, some of the kids and, and adults even were just, you know, going for little hikes and walks on these trails. Well, what I didn't realize at the time until I looked at a map afterwards uh, was that, you know, the road that the hotel was on kind of bisected this forest area so that on one side there was a nice little forest area and on the other side was like hundreds of square miles of like the black forest or whatever. And uh, so when we went for our walk in the forest, we went on that side, not the other little side. And so um, I had a buddy and we were going and we had some friends that started out, but they, they immediately thought it was boring, so they went back to the hotel. But me and my buddy, we thought it was pretty cool. And so we kept walking, we probably walked for like an hour. And so then it was, you know, it's late afternoon, it's around four o'clock, we're thinking, ah, you know, dinner time's gonna be soon, let's head on back. So we turn around and start walking back, thinking we are retracing our steps. Well, after about an hour of walking back, uh, we realized that we were not walking back and we had no idea where we were at all. We had no idea what direction we were facing. Mind you, this is in the age before cell phones and all of that, so I couldn't just pull up Google Maps or something. Uh, we had no idea at all where we were going. And so we decided, though, that we couldn't stay there. So not realizing how big the area we were in was, uh, we, we thought, we'll just keep walking and eventually we'll come across something, you know? And so we just kind of keep walking and we did come across something. What we came across were like some military signage uh, that had like tanks on it and stuff, you know? And like a little guy with a rifle, <laughs> like looking like he's gonna shoot you. And, uh, and so, uh, but again, we were dead lost at this point. So we just kind of kept going and uh, we saw some really cool cement bunkers. Uh, it's really interesting, and uh, at one point we decided it's starting to get dark, it's like dusk, and we're thinking, this is taking way too long, we need to speed it up. So we thought, let's just kind of jog, let's start kind of running, and we'll get where we're not going even faster. And, uh, and as you can tell, I am uh, not a fast runner. And so my friend who was skinny and lanky and long-legged got out ahead of me by about you know 25 yards or so, and I'm running behind him, and I see him just suddenly like hit the dirt. He just takes a tumble, and so I get up to where he fell, and there's barbed wire coiled across the road, and so which we were like, oh thank God, civilization was really what we thought of at that point. So uh, we kept going, and finally we see some lights off in the distance, and uh, we get a little, there's, uh, as we get closer, we see it's like chain link fence with barbed wire across the top. We didn't know what it was. Uh, this was, you know, Soviet era, East German era times. And so, you know, it could have been a gulag for all we knew, right? And so, uh, no, we were in West Germany, of course it wasn't. But as we got closer, we see, oh, miracle of miracles. It's a United States military base. So we're like, whew, right? And so we were super relieved, even after they pointed rifles at us. We were still excited to be there. And uh, once they realized that we, we were what we said we were, which was teenage lost American tourists, uh, they literally put us in the back of a flatbed truck and drove us to the military police station, where, and this is pre-9-11, but apparently, if you just walk up to a military base, they take that stuff pretty serious. Uh, and so uh, we were interrogated quite thoroughly uh, until, again, they finally realized that we were just um, lost American tourists. And so then they gave us a ride back to our hotel, which it's about like 11 p.m. at night by now, right? And as you can imagine, the chaperones were not super stoked. Uh, <laughs> They thought they lost two kids in Germany, you know? And the guys that drove us back, they were super nice. We were talking and laughing and joking with them. Uh, and, but they drove us back in a military police car, which looks like a police car. You know, it's got police across the side. It's got lights on the top. And, uh, and the, <laughs> the uh, chaperones and all that were, and teachers or whatever, were like meeting in the front lobby of the hotel and they drove us right up to the door of the, the, the front lobby. And so, like a police car pulls up, the door opens, we get out, we're like, hey, thanks for the ride, guys. And we just walk in, you know, and everyone's jaws hit the floor. And uh, we were actually in a little bit of trouble. 
uh, which to this day I'm a little offended by uh, because we really, I don't, what did we do wrong? We got lost. You know, we didn't do anything purposely wrong. We, we got lost. And I'll tell you what, kind of scary getting lost, right? Uh, I mean, I know it seems like it doesn't happen very much, but people do die in the woods still, right? It happens. Uh, and so uh, uh, we were very relieved to be back. Um, that feeling of being lost like that uh, is scary. And uh, it's not a feeling that we just have when we're physically lost. Uh, it's a feeling also we have sometimes when we feel just kind of lost in life. Like when we don't know what our purpose is, when, when we don't know what we're meant to do, uh, when we don't know what we are meant to accomplish. And so a lot of us spend a lot of time searching for meaning in life. And we search for it in our jobs and in our careers. We search for it in our relationships, in our families, uh, in our children. Uh, we search for it in lots of places. And indeed, those things can oftentimes be very fulfilling. They absolutely can. Uh, but sometimes they're not. And even when they are, we oftentimes still feel like there's something missing because we also want to have that sense of spiritual fulfillment. We want to have that sense of a spiritual purpose and a spiritual meaning in our lives. And that's why so many of us find our way, work our way to the church, work our way to the faith of believing in Jesus and believing in God. And there's a lot of reasons we believe in Jesus and we believe in God, but a lot of times one of the hopes we have is that when we do, we'll finally find this sense of meaning and this sense of purpose in our life. But it doesn't happen just by magic. You know, a lot of times we come to faith, we come to church, and it can be a very, I'm not saying it's not genuine, right? It can be very genuine, heartfelt, Holy Spirit-led faith and belief, and yet we still feel like we don't know what our purpose in life is. We still feel like uh, we don't have any real meaning uh, in our life. I've seen people, you know, it, it a lot of times will start with people leaving a church. Uh, I've seen people, you know, both ways, I'll be honest, you know, I've seen people leave other churches and come here. I've seen people leave this church and go to other churches because they just couldn't find what they were really looking for in that church. And as troubling as that can be, even more so is when they sometimes leave the faith because they haven't found that thing they are really looking for. How can we find our meaning and our purpose in the church and in the faith? Because rest assured, there is one. Uh, there is meaning. There is purpose. Not just in a general sense, but even in a specific sense, even for you. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. Because God does give us meaning and purpose in life. And so first I want to talk about three things he gives us that helps us to find our meaning and purpose in life. The first thing that God gives us is he gives us a unique personality. You know, we talk a lot about creation, especially nowadays. There's, you know, like in media, and I kind of hate that, that Christianity sometimes has this anti-science reputation, but, you know, there's a lot of, like, debate over creation and evolution and all that kind of stuff. But what often gets lost in that debate is an idea that is very important to us as Christians, which is that when we say God is creator, we don't just mean back at the beginning of time, but we mean that God created each and every one of us. Here's what it says in Psalm 139, verse 13. This is, I believe, written by King David, and he's this is his prayer to God, so he's speaking to God. And he says this, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. God didn't just create people. He created you, and he created me. 
And that means each of us are somewhat unique. That God has made us each a little bit different. And so we have unique personalities that we bring into whatever situation that we are a part of. We have unique personalities that help determine what our meaning and purpose in life is and how we can fulfill that meaning and purpose in our life. So number one, God gives us a unique personality. Number two, God gives us unique gifts. God gives us unique gifts. Um, And this starts, you know, it's a simple, I can illustrate this best just by talking about this. Think about the things that you like and dislike and how they differ from other people. You know, uh, I, I talked about bodybuilding last week. It surprisingly resonated with a lot more people than I actually thought it was going to. But let me ask you this question. How many of you big fans of bodybuilding? How many of you are going to watch the Olympia in a couple of weeks? None, right? None. I like it, though. I like it, right? We have different likes. We have different dislikes. And this translates into other parts of our life as well. We all have different things that we're good at. We have different things that we're not good at. We have things that we like doing, things that we don't like doing. And it goes, so God, you know, it's very clear that we have different skills, different talents, different abilities. But it goes beyond even that, because God also gives us spiritual gifts. And those spiritual gifts that he gives us, whether they range from things like, you know, prayer and teaching and evangelism to some of what we might call the more supernatural gifts like speaking in tongues or prophecy or something, whatever it is, we all have different of those gifts. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 12, Verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. So we all have different gifts. We have unique gifts that God gives us, and we are called to use them. So we have a unique personality. We have unique gifts. And the third thing is he places us in or gives us unique opportunities to use those personalities and those gifts. What is our purpose? Well, the Bible speaks of that a lot in in broad strokes. Uh, In the text we just read from Colossians in verse 10, it says, you know, part of our purpose is to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And so there we see in kind of very broad strokes Uh, several things that God wants us to do, right? Uh, He wants us to do things that please him. He wants us to bear fruit, to do good works, and to grow closer to him. That is part of our purpose in life. And as we go through life with our unique personality and our unique gifts and talents and abilities, he gives us unique opportunities to do these things, unique opportunities to please him, unique opportunities to bear fruit, unique opportunities to show our good works by serving other people in love. So God has a meaning and purpose for our life, and to fulfill that, he gives us a unique personality, unique gifts, and unique opportunities. But that still doesn't make it easy. It's easy to talk about that in the broad strokes we've been talking about, but what about when it finally comes time to decide for you what your unique personality is, what your unique gifts are, and what unique opportunities you have to use them in? That can be tough. I can't tell you how many times I have people come to me and tell me, like, I'd really like to do something to serve in the church. I'd really like to do something to help, but I don't know what I'm good at. In fact, it kind of reminds me of something. Uh, It reminds me of an old episode of Seinfeld that I saw once. And uh, if you haven't seen Seinfeld, first of all, what's wrong with you? Uh, But (laughs) second of all, uh, there's a character named George Costanza. He's kind of a lovable loser type, right? 
and, uh, and there's a moment where he has lost his job, doesn't know what to do with his life, and so he sits down to talk to Jerry about it a little bit, and so I have a short little clip I want to show you of, of him and Jerry having this conversation. I like sports. I could do something in sports. Uh-huh, uh-huh. In what capacity? You know, like the general manager of a baseball team. Yeah, well, that, that can be tough to get. Well, it doesn't even have to be the general manager. Maybe I could be like an announcer, like a color man. You know how I always make those interesting comments during the game? Yeah, yeah, you make good comments. So what about that? Well, you know, they tend to give those jobs to ex-ball players and people that are, you know, in broadcasting. <laughs> well, that's really not fair. I know. So to me, that mirrors the kind of conversation that we often have with ourselves when it comes to serving and finding our purpose in the kingdom of God. We'll find things, we'll see opportunities, but we'll not be sure if we're a good fit, or we'll see things in ourselves that we think uh, we have a talent or gift for, but we're not sure how to apply them in service to the church. And I think a lot of times what that comes down to is a little bit of insecurity. When we see an opportunity to serve, when we see an opportunity in which we might fulfill our purpose and find meaning in the kingdom of God, oftentimes we end up stopping and thinking to ourselves, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. I don't have what it takes to do this thing. Even though they might really feel like God is calling them to do it, we get scared and we think, I'm not ready, I don't have what it takes, I don't have the qualifications. I've, I've had people come, before, come to me before and say like, man, I found this really great Bible study, uh, I really th w thought it was awesome, uh, we should do this Bible study. And, and I've said to them, great, why don't you start an L team and lead that Bible study? And they're like, oh no, I can't do that. I mean, I don't know, I don't know enough about the Bible. I don't, I'm not, I'm not like you. You know, I don't, I haven't studied, I haven't done all this stuff. Like, here's God clearly placing an opportunity before someone. And yet, they don't feel qualified. And uh, I think that happens to a lot of us a lot of times. Or the other thing is uh, exactly what we said before, the complete opposite of that, where you go, you know what, I think I'm really good at this thing. But I don't know how to translate that into actually helping someone. I don't know how to translate that actually into the life of the church. I don't know how to translate that into impacting the world or the, or, or, or the kingdom of God. You know, I'm good at this. You know, maybe I'm really highly organized, but what do I do with that, you know? Uh, how does that help anybody? Um, it's so easy to fall into those traps and be all indecisive like George and not know what we're doing. Part of the answer to that is to go back to those three things we just talked about in the beginning and constantly remind ourselves of those things that God has created us and given us a unique personality that is suited for unique opportunities, that he has given us unique gifts that are suited for unique opportunities. You know, don't believe the lie that you have nothing to offer or that what you do have to offer doesn't apply or doesn't have any use in the kingdom of God. Stop believing that because it's not true. That's a lie that the devil tells us because he doesn't want us to get out there and find our meaning and purpose. And it's a lie we tell ourselves just because we're insecure and afraid living in this broken world. Don't believe the lie that you have nothing to offer because you do. And let me tell you something, we are all put together in this church precisely because we don't all have the same gifts and all of our gifts don't apply to the same opportunities. The Apostle Paul ad directly addressed this in his letter 
to the Corinthians who were having that same issue where they had some people that thought, I mean, both sides of it, they had some people on the arrogant side that were like, oh, I have these amazing spiritual gifts and so I'm a super Christian better, better than everyone else. And then they had other Christians that were like, oh, I don't think I have any gifts and, and, or, or my gifts aren't as good as theirs and there's no point in me using them. And this is what the Apostle Paul said to both of those people in chapter 12, he said, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. You are a part of the body. And you have a unique personality and unique gifts that God has given you to use in that body and in his kingdom. And he also empowers us to use them. Because it's not by our own strength that we have those gifts it's through the power of his spirit. And that is where we find the power to serve and make a difference. From our text today in Colossians in verse 11, it says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. It is not by our own power and strength we do these things. God has empowered us to do these things. And if you feel like you are not qualified, realize that God has made you qualified through Christ Jesus and through his spirit working within you. God has given you gifts, empowered you by his spirit, has made you qualified, and will put opportunities in front of you. So take those opportunities and find your meaning and purpose. And in Jesus' name, amen. But I'm not quite finished because you may be thinking, hey, that's great. You ended on a high note and all, but I still don't know what my gifts are. I still don't know what's unique about my personality, and I still don't know how those things fit into the church how can I know those things, Pastor Matt? Come to E3 next Tuesday where we have some fun activities that are going to help you discover things about your personality and about the gifts that God has given you. And again, just a reminder for those of you that came in at 1115, uh, because, unfortunately, because of the hurricane, we're not meeting this week. So it won't be this Tuesday. It'll be a week from Tuesday. So we'll be kind of a little week off in how we're doing things, but we'll still manage to cover everything. So join us a week from Tuesday to find out what your personality and your gifts are and how they can fit into the kingdom of God. And uh, while we're thinking about this stuff, uh, we're going to take a moment to gather our morning tithes and offerings.
We rise to pray. Father, we thank you uh, indeed that we can find our meaning and purpose in you, that you have given us those unique uh, gifts and unique personalities and unique opportunities. But Lord, we pray that you would help us to find out what those are, to identify them when we see them, and that you would continue to empower us to take part in them. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we know that every uh, good gift that we have comes from you, and so we are quick to give you our thanks and praise for those blessings. And Lord, today we praise you for the uh, fun run that our school did and uh, how successful it was. Thank you uh, for that event and, and for the enjoyment that it brought. Lord, also we do thank you that at least uh, at this point, you know, it seems that you have moved the hurricane away from us. Uh, and Lord, we pray that you would continue to do so, that everyone might be kept safe. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray uh, for all those that have recently lost loved ones. Uh, and uh, Father, we know how difficult that can be. And uh, this week, it's not listed here, uh, but uh, we want to pray for Hudson, um, who did pass. And uh, Father, we pray for uh, his family, that you would comfort them during this extremely difficult time. Uh, Lord, this is one of those moments when it would be very easy for them to lose hope and despair, but we don't want that to happen. So Father, we pray that you would comfort and encourage them and continue to give them hope. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, Father, we pray for all those that are sick and in need of healing, especially Jean, Alice, Locken, Josh, Millie, and everyone that's on our cancer list. Father, we pray that you would be with each and every one of these people, that you would encourage them in this difficult time, that you would ease their pain and suffering, and Lord, we ask that you would heal them. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, Father, we come before you with all of our other needs. We pray today for our nation and our world. We ask that you would be with all of our leaders and elected officials. We pray that you would bring peace to the world and an end to violence. And Lord, especially we ask that you would watch over Christians around the world that may be facing persecution. Lord, in your mercy. Father, all these things we lift before you, and we ask them in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now having been fed by the word of God, having been strengthened by the presence of the Holy Spirit, and having been encouraged in fellowship with one another. Take what you have been given. Go forth into the world and share it. In Jesus' name, amen. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to sit I know, I know, I know, I know Choices me to stand on I know, I know, I know, I know. God is all.
Now go in peace and serve the Lord.